In this video, we're going to familiarize ourselves with matter. We're going to think about what matters about matter. But in particular, we're going to think about a lot of words you'll hear, especially in a chemistry class, and how they might relate to each other when we're classifying matter. So first, let's start with the definition of matter. Well, a good definition is anything that has mass and anything that has volume, where it takes up three-dimensional space, is matter. It has to do both of these things. Mass, you probably have an intuitive sense. An elephant has more mass than a mouse. If we want to get a little bit more technical, it's related to how hard it is to accelerate something. Now, you might be saying, isn't this everything that has mass and volume? But we have to remind ourselves, even within scientific circles, there's many things we talk about that don't have both mass and volume. For example, we can think about waves. We could think about energy. And then you could think about things that have energy or that have wave-like properties like light or sound. And all of these things would not be considered matter. And of course, I guess you could even broaden it to uh, ideas like love. That also would not be matter, but I'm, I'm probably going on a, a bit of a tangent there. But we're going to stay focused on the matter side, not on the not matter. And the first division of matter is between what we could view as pure substances and mixtures. Now, a pure substance, one way to think about it is, no matter how small we get, any sample we take, and we don't chemically alter that sample, so we're not doing any chemistry making or breaking bonds here, if we take a chunk of it, you're going to have consistent chemical properties. You're going to get the same thing, once again, assuming that you're not changing the structure chemically. You're not making or breaking chemical bonds. You can get down to the microscopic, to even the molecular level, and you're going to have the same properties. While in a mixture, that isn't true. That if you get close enough, you're going to get chunks of things that have different properties. Now, within pure substances, and I'll give a little bit of a division within mixtures as well, pure substances can be further subdivided. So here, we could have a pure element. So this is a pure substance that only has one type of element in it. And this is an example of pure gold. And in reality, it's hard to have an absolute 100% pure thing. But most of these gold bars you zero in, you're going to get a gold atom there. If you zoom in enough, it is pure gold. It is a pure element. Well, what we have over here, this is pure water. Now, water is still a pure substance because you go down all the way to the smallest level, to a molecular level, as long as you are not chemically altering the water, you are going to still get the same thing at any scale. But water is made up of different types of elements. The chemical formula for water Every water molecule has two hydrogens and one oxygen. And so when you have a pure substance that has more than one type of element in its smallest unit that has its chemical properties, we call that a compound. Now, I also used this word molecule when I talked about a water molecule. And sometimes it's confusing. When do you use compound? When do you use molecule? And one way to think about it is a molecule is anything that has more than one atom bound together, while a compound is a subset of molecules that has different types of atoms bound together. So for example, if we're thinking about molecules, I'm drawing a little bit of a, of a little Venn diagram here, if we, or a set diagram, I should say. Examples of molecules could be molecular hydrogen. It has two of the same atom, but they are bonded to each other. And so actually, if you had a bunch of H2 molecular hydrogen, that would be a pure element. It could be O2, molecular oxygen. That is a molecule. But if we're thinking about compounds, we could think about H2O. That is both a molecule and a compound. All compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. If we think about carbon dioxide, that is a compound. It has not only more than one atom, but the atoms are of different types. And of course, you could have pure substances that are neither molecules nor compounds. You could have a situation like neon, which is a noble gas, and it doesn't like to bond with anything, even itself. And so it could just be a free atom. So if you had a bunch of neon together, that could be a pure element. It is neither a molecule nor a compound. Now let's go on the other side of this little taxonomy that we're creating to mixture. So mixture, if a pure substance at any scale, you get down the microscopic scale, and as long as you're not chemically altering, making and breaking bonds, you're going to get the same properties. You're going to get the same stuff. But in a mixture, 
when you get down to a small scale, you don't necessarily get the same thing. And that you can actually get different things, not by doing chemical changes, but by doing physical changes to them. So this right over here, where you can clearly see the difference. So there it looks like in this, in this rock here, part of it is this one type of glassy looking mineral here, and then you have this other type of mineral looking here. It's clear that these minerals are mixed together. And a mixture where it's clear that the different parts are different stuff, we would call this a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous. Each of these minerals are oftentimes pure substances, but you have a bunch of pure substances mixed together, but you can it's pretty easy to pick out where one is versus the other, and they aren't mixed together in a uniform way. And so that's why we call it a heterogeneous mixture. Now in this picture on the right, we have to have two mixtures going on. We have the air up here, and air itself is a mixture. A lot of you might say, wait, air is matter? It doesn't feel like anything is there. Well, that's just because that's just because you're used to it. Matter is anything with mass or volume. And air, especially the air molecules, for sure have mass and for sure take up space. They have volume to it. Matter can come as a as as a gas, as a liquid, as a solid, and even as plasma. Those are all those are states of matter, but that is all matter. But the reason why the air that we breathe is considered a mixture is that it's full of nitrogen, it's full of oxygen, it's full of carbon dioxide. In fact, it's, it's mostly nitrogen and oxygen. Those things can be physically separated from itself. You can zoom in on the air and you can do things to just pick out a nitrogen molecule or an oxygen molecule or a carbon dioxide molecule without making or breaking bonds. But air, where you have these different pure substances that are mixed together really well in a uniform way, this is known as a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous. And similarly, water that you might see in, say, the ocean is also going to be a homogeneous mixture because it doesn't just have H2O in it. It for sure is going to have H2O in it, but it's also going to have sodium chloride that has been dissolved in it, so it'll have sodium ions and chloride anions in it. It's going to probably have other things that are mixed into it. It's probably going to have molecular oxygen mixed into it, but it's mixed generally pretty uniformly. So that's why we call it a homogeneous mixture. So I'll let you go there. This is giving you the toolkit for a lot of the words that you will hear in chemistry class, and it's useful to be able to know what these different things mean.